Strap on your tampon. It's that time of the month on the Nothing Important Podcast. La da da da. The smell of your skin lingers on me now You're probably on your flight back to your hometown I need shelter for my own protection, baby I need to be with myself and center Clarity, peace, serenity I hope you know, I hope you know That this has nothing to do with you It's personal, myself and I We got some straightening out to do And I'm gonna miss you like a child misses her blanket But I gotta get a move on with my life It's time to be a big girl now Big girls don't cry Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry The path I'm walking I must go alone I must take the baby steps till I'm full grown, full grown. Fairy tales don't always have a happy ending, do they? And I foresee the dark ahead if I stay. I hope you know, I hope you know. That this has nothing to do with you It's personal, myself and I We got some straightening out to do And I'm gonna miss you like a child misses her blanket But I need to get a move on with my life It's time to be a big girl now Big girls don't cry like a little school maid in the schoolyard We'll play jacks and do no cards I'll be your best friend and you can be my valentine Yes, you can hold my hand if you want to Cause I wanna hold yours too We'll be playmates and lovers and share our secret world But it's time for me to go home It's getting late I need to be with myself and center Clarity, peace, serenity I hope you know, I hope you know that this has nothing to do with you It's personal, myself and I We have some straightening out to do And I'm gonna miss you like a child misses her blanket But I need to get a move on with my life It's time to be a big girl now And big girls don't cry Shotgunned a uh, a Zoom recorder into the Leonard Skinner and Blue Oyster Cult show at last year's NAM. <laughs> <laughs> and just held the Zoom on top of my head and stayed still and stared at the stage. <laughs> and I uh, released that as a front of house show. 
Please enjoy the show. The Nothing Important Podcast. I'm your host, Brian, and I'm here, as always, with my co-host, Dave. Dave, hello. Witty retort. <laughs> nice, nice. nice. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel a little weird right now because it, it's Friday morning and we're trying to get the episode out uh, this afternoon. And so what I had to do, Dave, is... Uh, basically take my lunch break and I'm in like an empty side room of where I work. Nice. So it's kind of, it's kind of funny because I hear people in the hallways and such and uh, they can hear you. Yeah. They could probably hear me a little bit and they're probably like, wow, that guy's having like a really lively conversation. (laughs) So so it's just kind of, it's just kind of weird. It's too bad you don't talk like me all mellow and subdued. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know what though but the thing is like even mellow and subdued my voice is loud and boisterous you know what i mean when i when i was i've sounded like this pretty much since i was like 13 i'm pretty and, sure you came out of the womb like Rrr. right <laughs> <laughs> but the best part about that is is um when i was in middle school and high school and such i just knew right away i couldn't whisper because even when i whisper my voice would carry Across the room, and I would always get caught by the teacher anyway. Yeah, you whisper like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Like, it's not really whisper. a whisper. <laughs> right, exactly. But today's episode, I'm, I'm pretty excited about. We have Mike Dawson. He's uh, a man of many trades. He's a, he's a concert promoter. He has his own podcast, uh, Front of House. Um, he's a sound engineer, and uh, I guess most notably, he is the producer and audio engineer for the Adam Carolla Show podcast. Yeah, basically what you just described is a sound engineer. Okay, so is it sound? <laughs> most, most engineers have uh, they have irons and many fires, as they say. Mm-hmm. Yes. Gotcha, yeah. And he was, he was an incredibly cool dude. We actually kind of passively, well, not passively, but we actually met him uh, when we went and saw Adam Carolla show live in Chicago. And he was a cool dude. He chatted with us for a few seconds, but he was busy and we kind of let him be. And, mm-hmm. you know, we took that time to invite him on the show. Cause we also had bald Brian, uh, from Adam Carolla show on our show, uh, to promote his book at the time. Right. And I, I, I think that's awesome because you know, we're, we're doing this whole podcasting thing and obviously we're not to that level or, you know, and I never claim to be, you know, but, um, it's it's great that people it's kind of like when we talk to the bald move guys you know people that have found success in this area of entertainment like it's cool when they come on and they talk to you even though you're way down the fucking totem pole right so uh dawson uh another thing i liked about it was is being an audio engineer yourself i was like oh this is going to be cool because i think i even mentioned it i love uh hearing people talk about what they know about to other people that know about it. Right. Does that, does that make sense? Like if somebody is, is an expert in something, this is something that has been mentioned many times on this podcast. Right. And uh, it was very cool for me to hear you guys talk about microphones and go back and forth about settings. And <laughs> the whole time, the whole time I'm sitting there laughing while trying to wrangle my daughter from coming in the room, you know, cause she probably thinks it's weird that daddy's hanging out, like talking on a microphone. Right. But while I'm trying to, to wrangle her and keep her away, um, it, it's, it, I, I sit there and listen and I'm like, these guys have such technical knowledge of something I use at least weekly now. And I can barely turn the goddamn knobs on this thing and stop it from clipping. <laughs> and then what's even great is you invited them to critique our episodes. And I immediately went to shit. You know what? He's going to go to what he's going to do is he's going to look at like the art of charm with a Jordan Harbinger podcast or the one <laughs> that we did with, with, um, with, uh, Billy Proceda from the man Horror podcast. Yeah. Where I didn't realize that the microphone was shut off, but the computer microphone was on. So it sounded like I was yelling at the microphone from across the warehouse. Well that, and I think our guests even have uh better setups than we do 
at the time or <laughs> or currently. So mm-hmm. yeah, the, our guest is the best sounding quality wise. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but we're 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 figuring it out, and we're uh, we're coming up uh, now on our second year of doing this. Uh, we we got it's all good, man. Coming up which I'm pretty excited about for season two. I'm trying to work on some interviews with uh, some returning interviews with the cast from that. Heck yeah. And uh, we're probably, we're probably going to start ramping that up. Probably, probably mid December. I would say we should probably start recording or maybe, maybe early January and start getting ready for, for the return of better call Saul. Cannot wait. Um, Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So if you haven't heard our better call Saul podcast it is the number one fan made uh, Better Call Saul podcast on iTunes. It's uh, called It's Saul Goodman. And if that's not true, I don't have the stats to back that up. I just have where it sits when you search Better Call Saul. We're always number one. No, so we're the number one better, the better, 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 the better, 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 yeah. better Call Saul <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we're, we're the number one. We're the number one Better Call Saul podcast that uses the word better twice in a row. Right. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, enjoy our talk with uh, Mike Dawson, all around awesome dude, audio engineer, and uh, producer and engineer of the Adam Carolla Show. Hello, Mike. Hey, Mike. This is Brian from Nothing Important. How are you doing today? So, what we're doing now is we're dude. I'm doing Brian awesome. Give me like one second uh, to get with our situated here, and then we'll guest. transfer. Da- uh, click over to Doug, uh, Dave. Okay. It takes a lot longer than we let on because I usually cut it out. All right. All right. All right, Dave, you there? Hello. I don't know if I got Dave on. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> All right. Mike Mike Dawson, thank you so much for being on Nothing Important. That was kind of an awkward transfer, but at least I didn't hang up on you. Hey, man. It works, it works. It's A to B, right? First time for everything. <laughs> There you uh-huh. go. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I have to get there. <laughs> I have a terrible habit of hanging up on people. So I, I guess first off, uh, me and Dave were just debating before we called you. Do we call you Mike Dawson, or how, how do you want to be addressed? Uh, you can call me whatever you want. I will never <laughs> introduce myself as Dawson. I think that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I tell people I'm Mike, <laughs> yeah. but everybody calls me Dawson anyway. So go ahead. Well, you just have you just have one of those last names. Like my last name, uh, I would say that there's probably people I've been friends with for ten years that probably aren't even entirely sure what my first name is. <laughs> what your last name is? I don't know, man. You got a little uh, natural disaster in yours. I got I got the game show host. It is it is kind of cool. It is kind of it is kind of badass. And then uh, on our other line is my co-host Dave. Uh, Dave is an audio engineer, and I don't know if you remember, but we actually met you in Chicago when you were here on the 24th of the last month. I totally remember. You do? Okay. <laughs> we, we were... we were. That was a we, very drunk crowd, and you were the only two guys who kind of held it together, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so yeah, I totally remember that conversation because... I thought it kind of awkward. We're here at the live show, and these guys aren't totally shit faced wasted. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're we're big dudes, you know. We we can we can put some back, I guess. But that's we true. Were, yeah, you got an advantage there. Yeah, <laughs> we we were excited because obviously you're the you're the audio engineer producer of uh, the Adam Carolla show, and we have our you know little podcast that that you're on now. And Dave and I kind of jumped to the chance. We're like, wow, let's go see what a live podcast is like. And the, you know, we're looking at the whole setup and stuff. And then, uh, you know, you were doing crowd work, uh, before kind of explaining how it was going, going to go down. I'm like, man, we should go, we should go talk to them. He he's the man. He might have some tips or, you know, Dave, he's in your field. Cause Dave geeks out about audio stuff all the time. <laughs> Dude, I am. I, I, I love geeking out about audio. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really my favorite science in the world. Right. And, and, and that's awesome. And I, I hope Dave gets into that a little bit because I love hearing people that know what they're talking about, talk about what they know, what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. Like if that makes sense. But, uh, I, I was also thinking, uh, cause I went up to Dave, I got a couple of beers and I went up to Dave. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's Dawson over there. I'm pretty sure. Let's go say hi to him. And, uh, 
so we walked over and introduced ourselves and then I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, man, how obnoxious is that? He's sitting there trying to run, run this soundboard in this th- thousand seat theater. And then people like us just keep coming up, like coming up and like, Hey Dawson, <laughs> like interrupting <laughs> yeah, you while you, you work. You guys are right. There was this one guy, one guy, uh, uh, walked, just took a step up into the front of house area. Um, oh, no. you know, pushing the velvet rope and, uh, as he's saying, dude, I want to work for you, man. I want to work for you. And I said, okay, great. You can start by backing the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, see, yeah, I he came into your area. I get it. I didn't want to be a, a hassle or anything. Cause I understand how it, you know, you're setting up and there's, you're probably in a strange venue. I don't know if you've run sound in that venue before, but, or, or if you were even routing everything in there. But, uh, yeah, you're a little busy, you know, show's about to start. You don't need drunk ass people har- harassing you all the time. Yeah, I was, I, I did do the sound, but fortunately they had, um, a good front of house, uh, good, you know, head engineer there. Basically I just had him stick around and if I needed to ask him questions, I did. Right. But, uh, you know, you know, one console, you know, them all. Yeah. And, uh, and it's all about, uh, advancing a show, you know, and you get in touch with the the top guy a day in advance and go, look, if you got, you know, four XLR lines on the stage for me. Right. And are sending everything to a stereo record bus, you and I are going to have no problems whatsoever. <laughs> so that's uh, you do, that's what you did. You just take a stereo recording from it and kind of mixed it live. Uh, it's yeah, it's basically it's it's mixed live. There's no going back in, nothing's tracked. In fact, every show we do for Corolla is is committed to tape. We're not single tracking anything, we're not doing any editing. Uh it's laid, it's played. Ah, yeah, I edit the fuck out of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? That's that's a beauty you, to, to be able to do that. I edit um front of house. Hmm. You know, I told uh I, I I tell the artists, look, if you if you uh if you cough, if you fuck up, whatever. Um if if we sound stupid, <laughs> I'm not gonna make us sound stupid, so just relax. Right. Um but yeah, yeah no, editing editing is fine, but that's the great thing about Corolla is uh, yeah, uh, I was gonna say take take a minute to de- uh, describe front of house because a lot of our fan base is uh musicians, you know, we're very active in the musician community, so they probably dig on something like that. Well, it's a it's a stereo music podcast um, released in digital HD. It's still an MP3, but if you listen to an MP3 that you you know transferred from a CD, mm-hmm. uh, my audio quality is going to be better. Okay. Um, and basically, I just bring artists in. Uh, there are three kinds of shows. I bring artists in. Uh, they set up and play, and then I go in for the in post and produce basically an EP for them. And we do an interview and it's song, interview, song, interview. Uh, next kind of show is I bootleg a bunch of live shows or it's a show I'm producing or, uh, uh, if I'm doing front of house, I record everything. And, um, and sometimes I turn those into front of house episodes. Like, uh, I (laughs) shotgunned a, uh, a zoom recorder into, the Leonard Skinner and Blue Oyster Cult show at last year's NAM. <laughs> <laughs> I just held the Zoom on top of my head and stayed still and stared at the stage. <laughs> and I uh, released that as a front of house show. That's and amazing. then I do mixtapes. Um, the third kind of show is just a variety of music uh, that either I have produced, recorded, had a hand in creating in some way, uh, or as a music director for radio stations for the last 15 years, 20 years, uh, I've gotten a lot of songs that I consider hits that never gotten any radio play. Yeah. And, and because I'm friendly with these artists and it's only good promo for them, they're like, yeah, shit, play it. So that's the third kind of show where it's a, it's a radio show type, type, uh, you know, playlist, uh, mixtape. It's a mixtape. Very cool. Um, so you're, uh, yeah, you have a lot of music oriented stuff. So are you, are you a musician yourself, or are you just a big fan of it? I, 
Look, I know five chords are cleverly. <laughs> I don't think. Well, I think calling me a musician. Most that's engineers. A little hoity-toity. Most guys that come um, across are either either they either play and then you know, they kind of get an engineering late in the game because they've given up on their dreams of rock stardom or whatever, and some are just just love music and have good ears. That's funny because I just got that tattooed on my forearm. Exactly, that's it's exactly what I have tattooed on my forearm right now. What's that? Uh, I got it. I got into engineering <laughs> late in the game because I'm not good enough to be a rock star, and I still want to be close to it. <laughs> Yeah. Are you fucking for real? Thing I've ever done. Second smartest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Is that a true story? You really have that tattooed on your forearm? Yeah. <laughs> In flames. <laughs> Hell That's yeah. That's pretty goddamn impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously you're 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 very passionate about audio and audio work. How did how did you know that's that's what you want to do in life? That was your calling. Um the oh, it's, shoot, man. When I got into radio, I, I always wanted to be a DJ. And then when I got my first job in radio and uh, I started, you know, you start as a board op. So you're just pushing faders. Mm -hmm. it's something, something very comforting about pushing faders. Yes. And <laughs> I've had a, um, you know, it, it, it just, it feels good, especially when they're weighted really nice. Um, and the, I saw that the engineers at the radio station, they were the guys who always, they had their own engineering spot. They wore what they wanted to work. You know, one guy just, he always wore Hawaiian shirts <laughs> and, and, um, they just, they had the science, like nothing happened without the engineers. So I always thought, after I got into radio, I was like, you know, I got to learn how to do that because yeah, it's, you know, it's the foundation of everything. Right. And because I love radio, I mean, I've done sales, I've done promotions, I've been on the air, worked in morning shows, done live appearances, set up concerts, all that shit. What I didn't have behind me is an engineering background. So when I saw the opportunity to go to school for free, uh, I fucking took it. Where did you go to school at, if I, if I may inquire? Pinnacle College. Okay. They advertised with the Corolla Show uh, a few years ago. Great program. Um, uh, it's like, it's a, it's a long program now. Fortunately, I got in when it was 10 months. Mm. They They really are getting into it a lot deeper now. So, I mean, for... For someone who's got two years, if you're just getting out of out of high school, right. um, and you got two years to give to it, this is perfect. But uh, I'm fortunate I uh, got out in ten months, and I aced it. I mean, I wouldn't, I didn't take uh, <laughs> anything less than you know A pluses across the board. I took it seriously, and yeah, that's kind of. I that got was... a ninety-seven percent on one test, and I was fucking pissed. <laughs> <laughs> As an audio guy, and obviously, you know you. You do engineering and producing for one of the biggest podcasts out there. And uh, Dave and I kind of started this as an I'm, extension. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Brian. The, like you said, one of the biggest. So, sorry, the biggest podcast out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, Dave and I started this kind of as an extension of our band that was on hiatus for a while while I had to go move off and uh, have kids and start a career and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, but the the thing about podcasting, like it is, uh, we talked to, uh, you know, a couple uh people from TV shows and such, and they, they said they like it because it gives like direct ask, access and stuff, which, which is true. But a lot of people that actually podcast, I think secretly want to be on radio and they see podcasting as some sort of death knell of radio. But I, I just can't foresee that ever, ever happening. What do you mean? Are you asking me if podcasting will ever, if radio will disappear? Or right, like I'm, I'm sorry, I, I paused for a second because I thought my daughter was crying. <laughs> See, I got distracted, which is why I can never be on professional radio is because I get distracted by stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah, do you think the because podcasting? I mean, obviously, there's huge successes like like the Adam Carolla show and uh, Mark Marin, and you know, there there's the big guys. There's always the big guys, but. 
Um, do you ever think that podcasting could even compete with radio? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, do? It can a- absolutely 100% compete with radio. People are starting to catch on. Um, podcasts are huge. Yeah. Um, it's, it's um, we did a, uh, interview with, um, we did an interview with, uh, some, some uh Bex. I, I forget Bex her name, from but, England. Yeah. Yeah, with with a woman from England and she asked us if if we think we're in the golden age of podcasting and my response was no, I actually think we're kind of in the stone age of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, it it's getting better. I'll tell you what the, the technology out there for recording and, and oh, producing yeah. this it, it's just amazing and and really really affordable. So anybody can do it. Um but the yeah, look, I, I could be hated for this, but the real broadcasters are on the radio. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm not saying Cole was not a real broadcaster. He could be on the radio if he wanted to be. Right. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. Too. Pirate ship. It works for him. He doesn't want to be on the radio. That's why we're not there. Right. Uh, Mark Marin could be on the radio if he wanted to be on the radio. He could totally be on radio. Um. You know, I'll use Dennis Miller as an example. Um, Miller is a broadcaster mm. and he'll, I, I'm sure he's going to switch over to a podcasting format or put it in addition to his radio show. Right. But, um, you know, I look, anybody can turn on a microphone and say something. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> it doesn't matter until people are listening. See, that's, I always compare it to like bands, like you have a local band, obviously there's always going to be the standouts, like, right. Like the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, the people that are just like huge beyond relief. And then as you go down the chain, there's people with varying degrees of success. And then there's, you know, people like us who would probably fit into the category of like the unsigned uh, bands. Yeah, we're we're like in the category of like you know maybe people from the Tri City area would come watch them Wednesday night at a bar. <laughs> that's 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 where I kind of see us. And then of course there's going to be the people that never even even make it out of out of the garage. Well, I think there are three things to it. Uh, one, you got to find your niche and mm-hmm. find where you fit into the podcasting world. Uh, two, you got to release a good product um, from content to quality uh and three you need to be consistent and that's all it takes and when podcasting does take off if you have those three three things moving you're going to get advertisers right but uh that's you know there's a there's a lot of wiggle room with all of those and uh you know um i i I, I, I've i not heard a podcast outside of Corolla Digital that really sounds great. <laughs> Which, yeah, well, I mean, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> signal chain. It's just, um, I mean, what kind of console are you using? What are, what are you using for your mixer? You got preamps. What are your mics? That's right. You start with a good mic and a good preamp. Right. Yeah, which Man, if you that's, got a that's what we're kind of hoping. All that can be inboard. That's honestly is like we, whenever you know, if Brian and I talk about you know trying to get some revenue from this or whatever, it's not the goal. Like my dream situation is if it can pay for itself and pay for a couple of nice pieces of gear, and then we'll see what happens mm-hmm. after that. Because you know we don't have the 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 pro audio preamps and uh, AD <laughs> converters and stuff like that. I'll tell you a uh, really quick turnaround. I do a radio show in uh, Michigan. I'm on afternoon drive on uh, 98.5 UPS. You know, we deliver. We (laughs) deliver that shit. (laughs) That is awesome. (laughs) So um, I do that show uh, on my laptop in my kitchen or in my living room. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, (laughs) On a uh, a Rode Procaster, which is a broadcast condenser mic, hmm. uh, not condenser mic. I'm sorry, dynamic mic. So you don't need Phantom, and a Sentrance Mic Port Pro preamp. The Sentrance Pre is 
the size of half a cigar. Oh, wow. And it's USBs into my system, and I sound better. I sound better doing the show from my kitchen in Burbank than I do in the studio in Michigan. So the company Centrance is putting out, um, I crowdfunded it, so I'll get mine uh, sooner and cheaper. (laughs) But pretty soon, they're going to be coming out with a dual two XLRs that you can plug directly into your iPad, uh, your smartphone, your laptop, and you can do two track recording. Oh, wow. Um, and it's clean and it is so good. So, you know, that may cost you around two, 300. And then the microphones themselves, the procasters are, you know, like a couple hundred each. Oh. So Christmas is coming. Yeah, so that's that's, <laughs> that's not too bad. <clears throat> I definitely don't have yeah, any that's... clean preamps. Everything I use tends to color things, which is great for music because I do we do music out of the, of our studio in Joliet that we work out of sometimes. Cool. But uh, some cool. nice clean like preamps would be yeah help out a lot. Yeah, um, uh, you know it, it's good to have a compressor on your pre, but basically you're just looking for that that extra boost. Mm. We do use the uh, RE20 sometimes. Whenever. Those are good mics. Those are good mics. Yeah. Um, We're using the, 87s uh, right now, but yeah, sometimes we get the RE20. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the RE20s are like the uh, the 58s of radio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I'm just having fun listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, awesome. No, I was just going to ask. So, yeah, you, you say you commit everything to tape. So, uh, I mean, you use compressors on the on the microphones and stuff like that all in your signal chain before you even go to tape when you're in the podcast. Uh, yeah. Uh, Adam, my compress, uh, just a, a hair less than two to one. So, you know, not that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I, it, it, I, I try to, to bounce it normally at six, but he yells a lot. <laughs> Sometimes I'm compressing by 10 dB, yeah. um, and at times I'm just barely touching it. So that's why I set it to where Adam's level barely touches the compressor. Mm. Um, and then when he gets hot and uh, and ranty, um, uh, he the compressor is set. <laughs> Thank that's you for a, that. Yeah, I think of- I think I tend to over compress. So I, thank you for that little. To a bit of knowledge there. Yeah, can, you know, if you got a good microphone, you don't want to over compress. You, you know, actually, if you got a shitty microphone, you don't want to over compress. Yeah, just bring out the but, shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it's kind of like a fail safe that, that, you know, when someone gets passionate, they're still talking at the same level. Right. Yeah, which is a problem I have a lot of issues with, right, Dave? Yeah, I'd say <laughs> I tend to use a, a much higher ratio on Brian. Usually it's around three. Um, because he can't yeah. hold the microphone in front of his face, apparently, and <laughs> he's, yeah, he's all over know. the place. <laughs> Look, that's, I know, I know. That's, that's step number one. Yeah, here's how you use a microphone. <laughs> I have to go to every live show. Every live show we do, I say the same thing to every guest. Yeah, you know, look, I know you've done this before, but this is for a podcast. So, just because they can hear you in the house. Right. Does not mean I can hear you on the tape. So, this is a microphone. This is how it works. <laughs> you know, I put it to my mouth, and uh, and and you know, one guy who was it? Um, a named guest. Uh, you know, a big comedian in the eighties. Uh, not Richard Lewis, but at that level, I forget. We were doing a live show. I forget where we were. And I asked him, you know, I said, you know, I said exactly that. And what does he do? It's like, it's like just to spite me. (laughs) The dude's holding the microphone to his gut. I'm like, (laughs) oh, you're such a fucking bastard. (laughs) You know, I I used to, uh, when when Dave and I had the band, because we we did the band thing for like 10 years and, uh, I could never get the whole microphone thing right. So Dave just had to settle for me when I held the microphone. I would touch the tip of my nose with my index finger 
and hold the mic with the rest of my fist. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way I could get any sort of consistent spacing out of it. And it drove Dave insane. <laughs> well, if you're holding the mic in that fashion too, you're covering a lot of the diaphragm. Yeah, exactly. And you're affecting the sound before you're even singing through it. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, most, cause it was a lot of rap that he did. And you know, most rappers tend to, they just want to cup it like it's a ball or something. And I'm like, no, you, it's like a shaft. You stroke it. So they have to fuck a ball. Well, you guys were at the show in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely. What, that's what Brandmeyer was holding his microphone. Yeah. He was holding it like he was some MC. <laughs> MC Johnny. <laughs> that, that guy cracked me up because you could just sense his excitement of being able to turn the filter off. Like, he's like, oh, I'm on a yeah. podcast. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a plus. <laughs> well, you look at the bright side. Well, awesome. Uh, Mike Dawson, thank you so much for coming on Nothing Important and, and sharing your insight and expertise. But everybody, make sure to check them out on DawsAngeles.com. It, it's so cool that you came on, and we totally appreciate it, Yeah, my super appreciate it. Thanks for geeking out with me a little bit, talking some shop. Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Brian. Listen, uh, you guys got my email. If you got any questions, um, just uh, let me know. How about, would, right, you, Mike. would you be interested in uh, critiquing the production of our podcast and then we can throw it up on our website and you can be totally honest about it. You know, there's nothing I like more than listening to myself. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually don't. <laughs> but, um, well, not, no, it doesn't I have, will, to, be, I, doesn't have to be this episode. We can do, you can do another episode. Just pick one at random and because some are pretty shitty and some are actually not too terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Mike Dawson, everybody. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Be sure to follow Nothing Important online at nothingimportantpodcast.com. Find us on iTunes, on Twitter at NotImportantPC, and you can also find us on Facebook. Nothing Important is recorded with help from Third City Sound in Joliet, Illinois. Thanks for being awesome. Awesome.